Welcome back everybody, this is Tucker. Let's talk weather. You may have noticed, but the weather is not changing much right now. I'll explain why that is and when some real changes come into play. We'll also talk about storm chances and the threat for dangerous heat this upcoming week. Good to see you again, guys. Hope you're enjoying the weather that you've had recently because I bet it has not changed very much. And the reason is actually quite simple. We have two upper level lows, one out here in the Northeast and we have one out here in the South Central US. You only need one of these systems to jam up the jet stream and slow everything down. We have two, and you can see the clouds and those would be rain and storms underneath them that have not moved much in the past few days. The good news is that I do see this pattern loosening up soon, but it comes with a big catch. Our weather pattern as we get into the weekend and next week is going to look very different. So as always, I'm giving you a sneak peek at the next several days ahead so you can plan before anyone else. I'm gonna take you straight to the source here and we're taking a look at the jet stream. You can see very clearly on our map our two cutoff low pressure systems. We got one right here and it's really wherever those black lines are closed off. That tells us there's low pressure extending very high into the atmosphere and it interrupts the jet stream. In fact, you can see the polar branch in Canada, but it's not over the US. So there's nothing to push these systems in and out. This pattern begins to shift as we get towards the late days of this week. And as we move this forward into Thursday and Friday, we're going to see what's called a Rex block begin to take over. So what this is, is an area of high pressure sitting atop an area of low pressure. And this also jams up the jet stream. Now this isn't a perfect uh, picture perfect example, but what you can see here is the jet stream to get around the two would have to, you know, squirm around both systems and that's just too much resistance. So it doesn't even bother. That means that our pattern once again will be pretty slow as we head into the weekend. And I do expect with upper level lows here and here that it is going to stay on the rainy side in the northeast and in the south central and southeast into this weekend. But we're going to see some real temperature rises out west and you'll have to wait and see. We'll get into this just how hot it's about to get out there. Beyond that, though, I'm also looking at our next potential severe weather threat. And you're going to see as we get into Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday next week, our jet stream begins to take shape once again. You can see it extending from the west all the way out to the east. And when it makes that dip like that, that tells you there's some instability out there. And I expect out here in the north central US, we will see severe weather as the jet stream begins to move into this region with a lot of energy, those pink and red colors indicating the wind energy, and the instability coming with it too. So next week, our weather becomes much more active in terms of severe storms once again. But as I mentioned, we're talking about more rain and the potential for dangerous heat. We're getting into that right now. Quick plug, guys. If you're not already following, I'm going to be giving you some of the best weather information on the market, so to speak. So make sure to subscribe. And if you have any questions, I will get back to each and every one of you in the comments. And now getting back to our regularly scheduled future cast here, you're going to see a lot of rain across the southeast and east coast as we go through the middle and later days of this week. Less so farther west, but here we are, those upper level lows keeping it pretty unstable. And in fact, I do expect on Wednesday and Thursday, we're going to have a low severe threat for storms in the southeastern U.S. It'll be pretty broad. I don't expect anything crazy, but could be some damaging wind, could be some large hail, low chances, but something to make note of. Heading into Friday here, you're seeing that rain really spread out across the northeast. You still got rain in the southeastern U.S., but once we reach the weekend, some of the changes you see take place are uh, really a lot of dry weather across the you know western half of the United States here. That's that upper level ridge I was talking about, that high pressure, and that's going to keep things dry. Now, as we get into the start of next week, you're going to continue to see the rain and storms in the southeastern U.S. as that one low just sort of meanders out there. And across the West Coast, you will see a couple of showers and storms move ashore. But here we are heading into Wednesday. And again, this is going to change a lot. So you'll need to check back for updates. But I will tell you, even though the weather models aren't showing it quite yet, I expect we are going to be talking about some severe weather. And you can kind of see it hinting at it right here. Also taking a look at our severe weather machine learning forecast and you can see it's very dead this week because when that jet stream is all tangled up it's not able to provide the wind energy needed for severe storms so we're really not seeing much on thursday friday saturday sunday or monday tuesday it's throwing some stuff in the southeast i'm not really buying that to be honest but again we will be watching areas out here and though there isn't much yet it is something, again, you'll want to check back on because I certainly see the potential out there for severe storms, mainly getting into Wednesday and perhaps even Thursday next week. By the way, let me know where you're watching from in the comments. I'm, I'm always kind of curious who's watching, and also I can give you a personal forecast if you ask. That's right, free personal forecast. That easy, just got to ask. 
All right, we're going to get into temps now. We're going to make this real quick. I'm showing you the anomalies where it's warmer and colder than average. And you can see as we head into the weekend, that warmer than average weather, right where high pressure is, that colder than average weather, right where that low pressure system is, going to be pretty warm in the east, at least the northeast as well. And the mountain west also quite warm. Then heading into next week, that warm weather should be shifting into the eastern U.S. It'll be generally cooler out west again as our next system moves in. But plenty of hot weather in the west towards this weekend and then in the east as we get into next week. Now here's where it gets interesting. You got temperatures that are going to be in the 70s and 80s. You can see those red and brown colors as we get into your Wednesday. On Thursday we're seeing temps of course cool at night and then we have more 70s and 80s across the US but you see some 90s start to appear out here in the southwestern U.S. Just wait and see here how high these temps go. And as we move this into Friday, you're once again seeing temperatures in the 90s, even hundreds across a good chunk of the south and western U.S. here. And it's not done yet. As we get into the weekend, those temperatures continue to rise. In fact, there is a non-zero chance we could see some temperatures approaching 110 degrees in uh, portions of California, Arizona. We could be in the hundreds in the valley out here. And it is also going to be very warm in the north central U.S. I mean, it could be close to 90 in southern Canada even, uh, if not getting into the 90s. And it will be very warm, as you just saw, across the north central U.S. There will be several days in the 80s and 90s and several days in the 90s and hundreds in the southwest heading into this weekend before next week we begin to see that warmth start to shift farther east and it will be quite hot into texas and eventually reaching the east coast next week and also that's going to help to fuel the severe threat and haven't had to pull this graphic out in a long time but the national weather service showing us level two or three risk for uh, severe heat out of four in the uh, southwest and level two out of four risk in the north central u.s nothing crazy but they are our first real high heat concerns this year and uh, there's going to be a lot more where that came from as we get later into the summer if you haven't seen my may forecast be sure to check that out i'll actually drop it in the description so you can find the link and all that if you have any questions always comment um, be sure to check back as uh, we continue to track some of these bigger changes in the weather for updates and um, let me know what you're doing this week and if you see anything interesting share with me i'd love to see and uh, i'm happy to talk weather with you guys uh, at any capacity so i'll see you back here next time and uh, drop any questions or any comments in the comments.